Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and today we are going to go over my top three favorite maps in the Hunter Call of the Wild as of uh, February 1st, 2023. You guys are constantly asking me, what is my favorite maps? And I figured, why not make an entire video dedicated to my top three? And also just showing off what I love about these maps. And as you can see, number three is Revon Tuli Coast. This map is one of the more recent additions to the game and has a very large variety of waterfowl and upland bird species and is currently the map that has the most animals in all of the Hunter Call of the Wild coming in at a total of 19 species. You know, one of the biggest reasons that Revon Tuli Coast is such a highly uh, ranked map for me is the fact that it's got such unique waterfowl hunting and upland bird hunting that no other map can truly provide. This map has a phenomenal combination of different bird species and more birds than any other map in the Hunter Call of the Wild. So if there's a time where I'm wanting to hunt some birds, this is the map I typically go to as it provides the largest variety and in general, it's just really good for all the species that are on here. With these guys being one of my favorites, the Eurasian Teal. They are absolutely beautiful to the point where even the females look amazing and typically the females of most species are not nearly as bright and colorful. But here with the teal, they still look incredibly amazing. And it's just a constant flow of birds from every single direction. As you can see, we've already got more of them flying over top of us and we haven't even finished claiming the two that we killed first. But that is not the only reason that I absolutely love Revon Tuli Coast. It is also good for things other than waterfowl and upland birds. Revon Tuli Coast is also considered to be one of the best whitetail maps, if not the best whitetail map in the entire game. A lot of people absolutely love this map when it comes to grinding for the whitetail great one. And because of that, it is a very popular map for people to play on. I do think Revon Tuli is a fantastic map for the whitetail as well, just like a lot of other people. I have done a bit of whitetail hunting in the past on this map. Not really super hardcore, but I've done enough to know that they are quite good on Revon Tuli Coast. And though I do prefer Leighton Lakes in terms of whitetail hunting, this is definitely right on par with it, if not better. The map has an incredible lack of brush around the majority of the lakes in the northern half and that really does make it a, a top option for a lot of people grinding the whitetail. A lot of people love Leighton Lakes but don't like how brushy it is and Revon Tuli Coast is typically where people go if they want to avoid the brushiness of Leighton when it comes to hunting whitetail. This map has virtually no brush around any of the lakes in like the northern half and even the southern half has very minimal brush to a point where a pretty much every drink zone you find for whitetail deer is going to be very open and easy to access. Revon Tuli Coast is also a great map to grind for the Great One Moose, which is another reason why a lot of people, including myself, love it. I do eventually want to do a moose grind here on Revon Tuli, as it is a very cool map to hunt them in. And though it may not be number one for moose, it's probably number two, just behind Medved Taiga. And I think the uh, final thing that I really wanted to say about Revon Tuli Coast that makes it a top three map for me really is the fact where in a lot of cases, especially when going into multiplayer servers, you can just pick a direction and run in that direction and see a lot of animals and have a really fun time hunting. This is just such a gorgeous map and it's laid out so perfectly uh, to the point where you can just get lost in running around the map and just shooting whatever you come in contact with, not necessarily focusing on waterways, but just kind of hunting whatever happens to cross your path. and. We actually have a really good example of that in yesterday's video where we did just that. We ran around and shot whatever we saw and ended in getting a really rare and cool trophy. And number two on the list is going to be Silver Ridge Peaks. This for the longest time was my favorite map until they did a rework to it and moved around a bunch of the species and gave them new uh, drinking times and uh, times for all of their other zones as well. And it made it fall from number one for me, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. It's still a top map for me and in fact is my number two favorite. Between the insanely good amount of variety in terms of big game animals to hunt, the map itself is also just absolutely beautiful being heavily based off of the Rocky Mountains. You can see just from this, it is one of the most visually breathtaking maps 
in all of the Hunter Call of the Wild. This map is just absolutely beautiful, and the one that's number one on my list is really the only one that I see being nicer looking than Silver Ridge Peaks, though there is some other maps that uh, come very close, but uh, there's just something about the way Silver Ridge Peaks looks that I absolutely love. I really wish I could break it down into a more detailed uh, description of why I love this map so much, but to be honest, there's really not too much that needs to be said. It's a gorgeous map with a lot of species I love hunting, and uh, this is one of the reasons it has always been a favorite map of mine. Stuff like the mule deer, the rocky mountain elk, the pronghorn, antelope, the bighorn sheep, and uh, many others are some of the animals that are compiled together to make this an amazing map and one that I love to hunt. Not to mention this is the best map to grind for the Black Bear Great One, which is a great one I still don't have, but every time that I'm grinding for it, this is the map that I tend to do it on because it's definitely the most uh, reliable and uh, consistent Black Bear hunting experience in the game, though that's not saying much considering Black Bear are generally not consistent at all. That's going to take that guy down. He should be going down in no time. But that is uh, really all there is to say about Silver Ridge Peaks. It's just a fun map to go on. Amazing species. Amazing looking map. Very good layout of where the lakes are placed. And also just a blast to hunt in multiplayer. Psst. Hey. Hey, you. That's you watching this video right now. If you haven't already... Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you've made it this far in the video, you're definitely liking it at least a little bit. So if you enjoy the content and want to see more of it, be sure to subscribe. Now, let's get back to it. Now, before we get into the number one map that I would consider to be the greatest map in the Hunter Call of the Wild, we have to have a couple honorable mentions. And these are maps that round out my top five, but didn't quite make it into the top three. And number one is, of course, Verhonga Savannah. This map is one that has grown on me more and more throughout the years and, and now would be considered one of my favorite maps of all time. It's got a lot of fun hunting for stuff like lions, which is what we are doing right now. And it's also got a very large amount of unique antelope species that you cannot find on any other map. Not only does Verhonga Savannah have a super unique uh, lineup of animals, but it's also a map that provides a, a hunting style like no other, uh, just like Revontuli Coast. Like I said, it's a unique list of animals that no other map has besides the Widgeons, and it also has a layout unlike any other map as well. There's very minimal water, it's a lot of open plains, and uh, one super mountainous brushy area over here. When you get to the south, it's a little bit more of like wetlands, and it just provides an experience unlike any other map in Call of the Wild, which is why it is a top five map for me. And our last honorable mention, rounding out my top five, which this one just barely ended up missing the top three at position number four, is uh, Leighton Lakes. This map right here holds a special place in a lot of players' hearts as it is one of the very first maps you end up playing on because it's part of the base game. It's one of the two maps you get when you purchase the game. And therefore, a lot of people have played this map quite a bit, including myself. And I have a lot of memories on Leighton Lakes, including the memories of the majority of our Whitetail Great Ones that we have took down, as well as so many other cool trophies over the years. Leighton Lakes has uh, always been a phenomenal option for a map, and... It's got a lot to offer, and it's crazy to think that to this day it still stands out as one of the best maps in the game, even though it was one of the first ones. And now we get to what I consider to be the best map in the Hunter Call of the Wild, Tiawaroa. This has been my favorite map for quite a long time at this point, ever since uh, Silver Ridge Peaks kind of went downhill a bit with the changes they made to it, and kind of dropping that map to my number two position. This is the map that took over because the changes that they made to Tiawaroa were so good that it skyrocketed from about number five, I would say, up to number one. This map is not only the best map for red deer, which is one of my favorite species of all time, but it also boasts a very unique combination of different antlered animals and a lot of them being deer species. We've got the Sika deer, we've got the red deer, we've got the fallow deer. There's also the feral goats and the chamois if you liked horned goat type species. 
And they also have the Mallard Ducks. They've got the Merriam's Turkey, and they've even got the Feral Pigs and the European Rabbits. This map really does just give you so many different options for hunting. If you love deer, you'll love this map. If you love birds, you'll probably love this map as well, because it's a phenomenal map for the Mallard Duck. If you enjoy going for pigs, this is a great map for it as well. If you like goats, this is also an awesome map for that because the feral goats are only on Tiabaroa and have a very large variety of cool looking horns. Same goes for the chamois. They're a very unique hunting experience where you actually have to go into the mountains to hunt them and they don't actually have any drink time. So you're kind of forced to hunt them in the feeding and resting zones up in this area, which is a really cool way to do things. And not to mention that this is also one of the best maps for the Great One Red Deer Grind, and in fact, it's probably just miles above any other map in terms of that. Now, let's go ahead and take down one of these feral pigs right here on a, what is my favorite map of all time, Tiabaroa. And one of the things that people also love about Tiabaroa, including myself, is the fact that you can pretty much just do the same thing as on Revon Tuli. You can run around and just hunt out in the open and find lots of animals. I mean, right here you've seen Zika deer, we've seen turkeys, and we've seen pigs all in one area just kind of walking around, and this is a pretty common occurrence. Diabaro also has extremely open waterways for the most part, which makes seeing all the animals very easy. There's also not a ton of lakes, which makes it pretty easy to find the animals when they're drinking. Not to mention this map is just beautiful. I've always loved the look of Tiabaroa. In my opinion, this map has some of the most beautiful forests in all of the Hunter Call of the Wild, and the deeper you get into them, the more it just immerses you in the hunting experience. This is one of the few maps where I will very commonly take a bow and just hunt in these trees because it really does provide a completely different experience. Uh, not to mention the trees pretty much fully hide your character in a lot of areas. Uh, not where we're currently standing, but there's a lot of areas where it will fully hide you, making it very, very good for sneaky bow hunts. But if hunting in the forest is not your thing, then there's also the uh, more open, uh, kind of plainsy field areas. Not really plains, I guess, but there are some areas on the map that have a lot of fields, just like this, especially around these lakes in the uh, bottom right of the map. This area is a very wide open area that is quite a bit of fun to hunt. Uh, the river is also a phenomenal area for the majority of species on the map. You have the red deer, the Sika deer, the uh, feral pigs, the fallow deer, and stuff like that that all share a portion of this long river. And uh, overall, this map is just a masterpiece in my opinion. It's one that used to get a ton of hate from a lot of people, and over time, the changes have made a lot of people see that this is actually a very good map, and a very fun map to play on as well, with a lot of species that you just don't see on other maps, like the chamois, the Sika deer, and the feral goat. And well, guys, that is my list of the top three maps, uh, plus my two honorable mentions that come in in positions four and five. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel as we do daily videos and streams, as well as uh, YouTube shorts and stuff like that. Also, leave a like if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below and let me know your top five favorite maps in the Hunter Call of the Wild, and we'll see how closely our lists compare. But once again, thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.